In this video I'm going to show you how to re-thermal your laptop PC. Now we're going to be using 50% rubbing alcohol from the dollar store, a thermal applier or a card, and the star of the show, Arctic Silver 5, best thermal compound on the planet. Okay, so this is a Dell Latitude 7490. I've got the computer open now, and the first absolute most important thing is we're gonna look first before we do anything. Now, you may not be as lucky as we are with this particular laptop because the heat sink and CPU cooler is exposed, so we can actually see it. On some laptops, you'll have to remove the motherboard, flip it over, so in this case, we got lucky. <laughs> so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look. I can see four screws right here holding the heatsink, two screws holding the CPU cooler, and I could see the power plug for the CPU fan. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the CPU fan. Now sometimes, like I'm doing right now, with a little bit of pressure, you can kind of shimmy it with your fingernails. See how I just kind of wiggled it loose and it came completely loose? Sometimes you'll have to use the pry tool to kind of pry it a little bit, but in this case I was able to wiggle it loose, so <laughs> got lucky on that one. Now I'm going to remove these four screws and the CPU fan screw. So what we'll do is first we'll remove the screws that are holding the CPU fan in place. Now always a good practice is if you can Try and pick up one of these metal trays. This will help you keep the screws in formation and you can kind of place them in the metal tray in the same way that you remove them. So looking back at the computer once you're ready to reinstall, you'll know exactly where the screws go based on the formation of how they were originally installed. Nice and easy. Not too much pressure, being careful to place the screws in a way into the tray that I'll be able to put them back in without too much guesswork. Sometimes these screws can be different length depending on your computer, so just to be safe. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, by holding the CPU fan, just slowly kind of work my way around. You see that? It just kind of, you had to just put a little bit of pressure and it just kind of snapped right off. Oh yeah, this definitely, definitely needs to be changed. And in my opinion, that's actually way too much thermal compound to even be there in the first place. So we're gonna get this replaced with some fresh Arctic Silver 5. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some paper towel. We don't need too much, so just literally two ply, two sheets of paper towel and fold it a few times. Now I'm going to take my rubbing alcohol and it's always good practice to <laughs> do this without the computer underneath just in case you happen to spill. So we're always going to go with good practice. So what I'm doing is I'm just literally placing the paper towel turning it upside down just a few times to get enough enough um, rubbing alcohol into the actual paper towel itself and then I'm going to squeeze it. I think that's enough. As I'm squeezing it you can see it's kind of coming out into my gloves. We don't want to have it so wet to the point where it's actually dripping. We just want to have it wet enough that the paper towel is, is damp. So now I'm going to go ahead and move the laptop back into place so you guys can see it. Now first thing I'm going to do, if you have a clean, like this one's a little bit up here, let's see if I can just redo this. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll take my pry tool, I'll give it a clean cut edge very very carefully I can kind of start to scrape some of this thermal compound off the processor now you want to do this very delicately if you just start rubbing 
the uh, paper towel that's damp in rubbing alcohol all over. You're going to smudge this and you're going to kind of move it around. So you can really see how much I've been able to kind of collect there. So just with another Kleenex, I'm just going to clean it off. You may not need to do this, depending on how much of the original thermal compound was already on the CPU. But I mean, I like to go ahead and remove as much as possible manually before I start rubbing the paper towel that's doused in rubbing alcohol to get the rest off. So I mean, okay. So we've got a fair amount off now. So now what I can do is I could take my paper towel that's damp, squeeze it, make sure. When you squeeze it, you kind of let the rubbing alcohol kind of go all over the paper towel. So now it's like fully damp. And now what I'm going to do is just very slightly, without too much pressure. See that? It's coming off beautifully. And as I go, what I can do is I can just kind of refold the parts that I've already used. Okay, now that I've got the CPU itself very clean, I'm going to tackle the heatsink. And for the heatsink, same thing. You can use your pry tool to kind of get rid of that residual gunk. Just kind of scrape it all off. Slowly but surely, just be patient. And once you get a good amount of it, like I have here, yay! <laughs> Put it into the Kleenex. Keep going. Until so you get the majority of it off. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, always keep a clean workspace, guys. Damp wet paper towel with rubbing alcohol. I'm just gonna slowly go over this entire thing. This one, a little trickier, you might need to really hold it and give it some pressure like I'm doing right now to get it off there. See? Slowly but surely. I'm just going to keep rubbing until I got it clean to the point where really the most important part that you're aiming to clean is you want to really get it off the copper here. If a little bit happens to stay on the side, I mean, obviously try your best, but that's your main goal. That's what you want to focus on. See as I'm rubbing, look how much is coming off this thing. Just be patient guys, this is a, this is a process sometimes. <laughs> you want to basically go to the point where you're using clean parts of the paper towel and every time you're seeing less and less of that gray OEM thermal coming off. Okay, I think we're okay to go now. Okay, so now that we're ready to re-thermal, before we do anything else, I'm gonna clean this entire CPU fan with micro attachments for the vacuum and I'm gonna clean a little bit of dust I can see here and just this general area to make sure everything is super clean before we do this. Always good practice. You wanna hold the actual fan so that when you're moving the micro attachment over the fan, you're not moving the actual fan itself which can damage the motor. So just something to keep in mind. Vacuum the whole thing. Other side, same story. I'm just putting my finger right in here so that I can get to these blades of the fan without the fan moving too much.
Okay, now that we've got everything clean, we're gonna re-thermal this heat sink. Okay, now that everything's clean and ready to go, we're ready to re-thermal this CPU. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Arctic Silver 5 thermal compound. If I can open it. <laughs> and I'm gonna apply the smallest, littlest amount here to the CPU itself. Okay? That may even be a little bit too much, but I'm gonna pull. Yeah, that might even be a tiny little bit too much. That's okay. Kleenex. Get rid of that access thermal. Close it up. Now I'm gonna take my thermal application card and I'm gonna ever so slightly, like super, super carefully move that thermal alongside the surface of the processor. I'm gonna really, really try my best turning the PC in different directions to kind of not get it anywhere else except processor surface. Take your time. Definitely no rush. You want to get a proper application there as thin of a layer as possible while ensuring full coverage of the surface itself. So I think that's good. Actually, I think that's really good. If a tiny little bit happens to get in between, like as you can see right here, just slightly, slightest amount there in between, it's okay, it's not the end of the world. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to look where the actual screw holes themselves are and I'm going to let the heatsink itself fall into place. Just keeping an eye on where those actual screw holes are themselves so that kind of almost fit perfectly. So now just with my finger, a little tiny bit of pressure. And that's stuck on there. Take my screws. I'm going to go first in a diagonal motion. So try not to use, move the heat sink at all if you can. So I'm going to put that screw in first. Now with a little bit of pressure. Sometimes it's better to hold the middle so that the heat sink doesn't move. I'm gonna slowly tighten these screws. And now you can reapply or reinstall the rest of the screws and you don't have to worry about this heat, heat sink shifting or pivoting slightly to the side when the screws are first in place. So this is the most important part is to have these screws first in place. So you make sure that heatsink itself is secure and not moving. Not too tight and you don't want to put too much pressure on the board either so just as tight as you can get them to the point where it doesn't want to go anymore but you're not pushing hard enough that you're gonna shave the rivets in these screws. So now we'll reapply, reinsert rather screws for the heatsink fan and then reconnect the power. Now I personally like to let my thermal compound on any processor, laptop or desktop, cure overnight. But you know, some people will say it's not necessary. I've always found great results in doing so, so it's completely up to you. If you can let it cure overnight, I would highly recommend it, but if not, at least give it anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes to just set before you power on the computer and heat starts 
traveling through that processor into the heatsink itself. So I've got the computer put back together now. I've been running YouTube for a little bit. And I'm getting some pretty good CPU temps. As you can see down here, really good CPU temps. So all in all, this was a great little upgrade. Please do feel free to like and subscribe if you guys found value and stay tuned for more tech related content to come in the near future. Appreciate all the support. Stay safe out there guys. See you in the next one.